Hi everybody and welcome to the channel. Today I am going to be building a circular saw jig so I can cut up to three feet of wood in a straight line with my circular saw. So here I'm attaching one and a half inch by three quarter inch pieces of wood to a three quarter inch deep other piece of wood. Now I go and grab my saw. I got to figure out how to pull the blade out so that we can slide the guard in and then we'll get a proper separation between the two pieces of wood that we are going to install. And once realizing I can pull a plastic guard out of the way, I can set circular saw in the middle and I would do this with whatever saw you have. I fold a sh sheet of paper in two to provide a little bit of gap next to it. Then I screw in the other side on both ends. And then I'm going to slide the saw forward and backward to make sure it runs smoothly. And then with the piece of paper back in place, I'm going to slowly move it through the middle so I would eliminate any left and right bowing of the one and a half by three quarter inch pieces of wood. And I run it smoothly back and forth to ensure that nothing is snagging as I go back and forth. And grab some pieces of wood here to measure the width of the stoppers that I'm going to be cutting. And then we're going to head over to the miter saw. Now we are over at the miter saw where I'm going to be cutting some three quarter inch pieces of wood to one and a half inches in width so they will match the long pieces on the side and then after cutting their width I'm going to go ahead and measure to cut their length I put the tape measure in place to ensure I'm measuring correctly move it out of the way and then cut all the way through with the miter saw doing the same for the second piece then we are going to head back over to the jig. Now we are back over with the jig where we are attempting to slide those pieces into place. It was a little too long, had to take it back to the miter saw and trim off just a little in order to get it to fit. And here we take the square and measure the middle of these pieces, draw a line, and then drill our holes into place. I had to go back and grab some clamps in order to clamp it smoothly down with the other one and a half by three quarter inch pieces. And now we've got that smooth in. I add one more hole on the side of the long piece in order to secure it in place. Then we head on over to the other side where we have to do the same thing. Trim off just a little in order to get it to fit. We clamp it down in position to make sure it is flush. Use the T-square to mark the middle of the piece. Measure the points in which we want to put the holes in. We use our countersink bit to drill the holes and countersink at the same time. And then put the screws into place. After that, we're measuring how far the blade sits from the edge. We're going to go ahead and mark that distance. And then we are going to equally cut one inch holes with a hole saw bit throughout the length of the jig. And then these holes are later going to be used to identify the lines we have marked on the piece of wood we are cutting. Now we've moved the jig onto some scrap pieces of wood on the ground in order to apply the appropriate leverage. And we're using the hole saw bit 
to drill our guide holes into our jig. Trying to make them equidistant apart, yet still close enough that if I have a shorter piece of wood, I still have two points of guidance. Now we drill from the other side to ensure it is smooth. Here we're going to use my table saw to cut off the excess wood on the side of our jig. You could also use the circular saw itself and have a small one and a half inches or less lip on the side if you don't have a table saw. Now we have clamped down the jig from workbench to the table saw to provide a safe, easy way to cut the slot with the circular saw. So we start by plunge cutting into the very beginning of the jig. And then going the full length all the way down and then running back and doing it one more time. Now let's pull the jig down off of its clamps, knock out all the sawdust and make sure that the whole track is smooth. And we're going to get a little testing done by cutting some shelving for a new shelf I'm going to build. Now here's one of the shelves that I need to cut. I've made a mark long ways on the line that I want to have the straight cut on. I take the clamps, clamp it to the board, and make a straight cut all the way across. Now there is a gap in between the two pieces of leftover board there to make a smooth line of a cut. Now we're going to grab a second sheet to do the same thing where we're going to use the guide holes to stay with the line, line it up, clamp it down, and make a clean cut all the way through. Now we're going to use the miter saw to cut smooth ends on some leftover wood I have in order to bring it back over to the jig and make a long cut. Now that we've got that piece cut, we've marked the line we want to cut, we are going to clamp the jig in position using the guide holes and the cutting line that we have marked on the piece of wood. Keep in mind that I use the guide holes and we take the inside most edge of the line because that is where the wood will be cut off. And you line that up with the line you have marked for the width of the piece of wood that you would like. Then you make a straight cut all the way across. This one is a long enough piece that I had to start with a plunge cut in order to go the entire length. And then once we get it going all the way through, we end up with a clean, straight cut all the way down. This has proven to be faster, easier, and more convenient than attempting to make this similar cut on my table saw as it doesn't allow for the width of the piece I want with a guideline. Here we have one of the last pieces that we're going to test this jig on. We line it up with the line that we have marked on the piece of wood. And we are going to try to center it as best we can lengthwise. Then we are going to clamp it down. And you can see in that front guide hole that I've got the line marked on the under piece of wood and it is lined up with the slot on the jig itself. And then I go ahead and plunge cut at the beginning and begin my cut all the way through. 
keep in mind your jug your jig may be skinnier or wider than mine based on the guide of the circular saw that you are attempting to use so just keep that in mind that you are going to want to use that guide to determine the width of your jig but then your jig should consistently work with that saw from that point on this has been about six months at the time I'm generating this video to when I have made the jig and I have used it multiple times since without any issue whatsoever. Now we go down to our final cut of this test. And again, same process center it you want to make sure that when you're clamping it down you are lining up the guidelines with the slot put your saw into the guide start with a plunge cut if your piece is long enough and then run it straight through and you'll be able to have a nice smooth long clean cut I hope you guys find this video productive and useful. If you do, please like and subscribe for more DIY content. Thank you for watching.